With this most recent update, we've seen the addition of some game-changing features that you need to be taking advantage of in Rust. Not only have they added some awesome new items that will have a major impact on the game overall, they've also been doing a few things a little more quietly on the side that you need to be aware of before they impact your gameplay. Jumping right into it with my new favorite addition, there is now a completely new job for your base, base organizer. In addition to keeping your boxes organized and your furnaces stocked up, you're going to be building your base buddy their very own drone station. From here, your favorite teammate can now provide air support with the newly added drones. At first, the drones are a fairly simple concept. Just grab the most expensive mats in the game, toss them together in a workbench, and place it down to fly. But the reality is that it's actually so much more than that, and it's about to change the way we play Rust. Once you place down your very own personal spy device, you're going to give it a unique name so that only you control it. From there, it's shift to go up, control to go down, and ASWD to choose a direction, as well as your mouse to choose where you're aiming your camera, as well as where you're turning the drone. It is a little more than that as you can combine some of these movements to get some nice whip arounds and go through some really tight quarters. It's worth knowing that your new aerial buddy is incredibly fragile. And if he gets shot or you bump him into a few too many things, he's gonna break. Unfortunately, currently the cost to repair the drone is, well, too expensive. So just fly it until it breaks. Now let's get into why it's so overpowered. Not only does this drone fly faster than a player can run, it can do so at ridiculously high heights and low lows. In addition to being able to swoop to gather players' names, this can very easily be used to follow someone back to their base, giving you that incredible intel. Not only is it incredibly versatile in the air, it also can be sat down anywhere. This is gonna provide you with not only a visual of the landscape ahead of you, but also the audio. This means at any point, at any monument, at any base, there could be someone watching and listening to everything you do. Not only can this be used to slowly spy on your neighborhood and figure out where exactly everybody lives and what their base looks like, you can actively provide callouts to your team by observing fights for heli, base defense, or even when you're raiding, allowing you to hover over enemies and track them down quickly. Essentially, it gives you ESP without the ban. To me, this is all an absolutely game-changing factor on its own, but it gets much deeper than that, allowing you to scout enemy bases, including inside their compounds next to turrets and inside their windows, but it also allows you to quickly scout out the best farm paths to find your sulfur or even check monuments for crates. The only real limitations besides how fragile it is, is the fact that it gets about a two to two and a half tile radius. However, getting around that is rather easy and cheap. Buying yourself another computer station from Outpost or crafting it yourself, you simply need to build yourself a one by one or a one by two with a TC and a computer station roughly every two to five tiles. Doing so would allow you to park your drone on just about any surface, respawn at the new computer station, and continue your scouting journey. Of course, you can have multiple drones at once and control them from any station. It is just very important that you don't let other people know the name of your drone, or you could very easily lose it. One final tip is if you do hit something and stall out, make sure to press that shift key to engage the propellers again, and then simply steer yourself to safety. I've actually saved myself several drones after crashing into windmills with this. Next, while we're still at the computer stations, we're going to be adding some new cameras. These new cameras are crafted using the old ones, but they do provide better angles and even take less power. Currently only taking three power to power this camera, you can actually control it to look around and also zoom in from different distances. This is perfect if you want to get 360 vision from your base at all times by simply attaching it underneath your windmill. This allows your base, bit, base best teammate to simply spin around and around and around and keep a lookout. In the same vein, Rust has also added a special new feature to Rust Plus. Any diehard Rust player already has Rust Plus installed on their phone. You basically can't play the game without it. Rust Plus allows you to see game events, check in game time, and even just see what your teammates are up to or yell at them in game. Rust Plus coming into the game was a major game changer. Personally, I'm always using it to trigger traps or to see when I'm being raided. Now, we can do even better than that. With Rust Plus, they've recently added the ability to see the cameras in game from our phones. While not the 4K 240fps view that we were hoping for, it does provide a very basic view through the cameras. Not only that, but watching through your phone can actually be better than in-game since it shows people's names in addition to the fact that they're there. This coupled with the fact that you can actually control the new cameras from your phone allows you to monitor around your base at all times with some next level security. The next major change to Rust for all the chads out there, the strike team, 
We've always wanted it, and it's finally here. Remote C4. This baby allows you to stack as many as you need and simply set enable RF, set a code, and pull a trigger. While very basic at its core, you can actually get incredibly creative with this. Some of my favorite ways of using this is setting up a breaching vehicle which can destroy a wall and then act as cover, or setting multiple different C4 frequencies on a minicopter and essentially preloading my top-down raid. Unfortunately, we can't set them on our new favorite sky button. In the same vein as the cameras, we now have another new view, the turret POV. Allowing us to log into the automated defense system, a player can take it over and even fire a turret. While I personally prefer the extra camera angle over the actual turret function, it does have some advantages, including firing down on enemy roofs, but in my opinion, it's better to let the turret do the shooting for better accuracy, even with the lack of recoil. One major exception to this might be the fact that you can raid with a turret. Not only will the weapon not take any durability damage while shooting, but you can actually just safely set up a turret with a little bit of a peek in front of somebody's door and raid right through. Finally, let's talk about the war on raiding that seems to be brewing with some silent changes by the dev team. We were all stoked for the drones when we heard about them, but it seems like people were being real quiet about some other changes that might affect raiding, and certainly did. In addition to giving us the ability to let Rust take over more of our lives by watching our cameras from our beds, Rust seems to have taken steps towards removing offline raiding in general. Not only that, semi-recently the armored door was given a buff, making raiding in general a little bit harder. Now in addition to that, we see a damage reduction to satchels. Where previously if you pulled up your handy raid chart or just went off your game sense, you'd only bring 4 satchels for a metal door or 10 for a stone wall. And of course, after arguing with that one teammate who thought it was 12, you'd get there to find out it was actually 5 satchels for that metal door and 13 for the stone wall. That's right, our beloved bean can wrapped in a stash has now been reduced to an even hotter of hot trash. Of course, 2C4 will still shred that wall, at least for now. My biggest takeaway from this is that you should definitely always be looking up and be aware of who might be watching you. Of course, everything that was added into the game is very much subject to change. This was made very evident for any of us who experienced the addition of subs into the game and how ridiculously overpowered they were for that first month. That said, there's nothing stopping you in the meantime from exploiting the heck out of these new additions and having a good time with it. If you don't want to be caught lacking, you should probably check out this base design on the left. Or for some great tips that might save your base or save your raid, check out the video on the right. However, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that like button.